To get started, make sure you have Lab FX Toolkit installed. So now you want to put down two trim Labs FX Toolkit nodes. So that's Lab Stream Texture and Lab Stream Texture Utility. So for now, let's take a look at Trim Texture. So basically, this is where we put our Trim Texture inside. Then we cut it up inside so we can easily use Trim Texture node to project our texture on object so for this what I have done in substance painter I just created this simple grid so what I've done is just from the Houdini created the grid and used auto UV and you go to the UV you can see that's a little bit of padding I just create padding zero like that and after that you can just export it inside substance painter and the circle painter basically created these trims. I am in no way an expert on trim. This is the first time I have done it. I just wanted to test it out and I just wanted to show how it's done inside Houdini. But for these trims, you're basically just putting down these alphas. So you can use even Photoshop to create whatever the whatever the layout you want and then just import it as alpha inside Substance Painter and it's going to create our normals in something like that so but I didn't suck in painter so something like this and the way I did it's no way the best way I just wanted to create something quick so let's say this one I just so you can take a look what I have done just without the color and all the other maps you can control roughness for metallic and just stamp in these alphas so if I'm, you can create whatever the alphas you want and what's very shanty is the stamping. So if you go to the these stenciling, so if you want to horizontal tiling, and just let's put down something inside the stencil. So let's put down something that could be duplicated, maybe like this. You can see we get this overlay that's going to be our stencil. Let's say you want these lines across all of it. Then you just hold down S. You can see it's S, and then with right button, right click, you can scale it. Actually, it's vertical. I want horizontal stencil, like that. And then you just in the white bars, you can just with brush paint in our normal detail, like that. So this is basically how I done all of these details. And then you just can stencil anything else that you want. Something that could be repeatable, but if not, then just you can just use the, the usual alpha that's going to be picked up like that. And for this, and for these letters, you can actually use a color also. Put down maybe non-metallic one like that. So basically, this is how you create it, and after that, you just exported them, export the textures. Make sure you have metal roughness height and all that and after you have exported them they should look something like this this is the newer one I created you can see how our normal roughness metallic height color and something like that so from our base color we can't really tell where our detail is so this height map is actually very useful for us to cut up our texture so that we can model it so I'm going to use this as our input inside our Houdini. So, for now, you can see in our trim texture what it asks us the color geometry, and the geometry is going to be this grid. So, we just unwrapped. Just put it inside here. So, now it has our, actually our UV coordinate. And for us to overlay it, we just pick our texture. I'm going to use it either normal or height. So, I'm going to put down height. As you can see. Now we have our projected, and what we have to do now is just cut it up to the pieces that we want to actually uh, that we actually want to project on our whatever object that we want actually texture. For us to cut up this trim texture, what we can do is go back to the grid and make it two and two, so that we have one big polygon, and then 
So you can do after the trip takes utility, so we can see our object is put down a poly split node. What's great about this that with this mouse scroll you can change the divisions amount of that you want to divide your object. So you just have to make cuts right between the trim that you want to create. So let's say I want this V1 trim. So in here and the other side on the same. Make sure it's actually snapped to the point, so like that, and now we have our trim. After that, you can go maybe in here, and then you can also change the amount you want to trim. So in here, and the other side the same way. Then go maybe, we definitely want this trim to be kind of small one, so change the amount so it's cut correctly. Then change it again. Like that we definitely want this one also on a trim so now we have then just press enter once you're done so this is maybe our horizontal trim so what you can do now let's say I want this trim to be actually different so different one so you can do it inside this one also so if you press on enter and try it again so it's do not snap to the trim that you created inside this this one so what you can do just go back so it doesn't actually delete so what you can do is just put down another poly split and now it's going to also divide the new ones so just like that so I think that's going to be good enough for our trims and now all we have to do is put our texture utility after that trim so just make way for this like that now okay you see it's our polygons are actually cut inside correctly for our trims and for now all you have to do is trim strips click on plus sign and then you just can select the polygon that you want for the strip to be so i want this one for our one select another one Press enter. Let's select many of these and then just start selecting them. Like that. Now that we have set up our trim strips, we can actually put this inside our second input for our trim texture. So now what we need is just the geometry, so let's first put down simple grid inside here and if you activate trim texture you can see the part that we trimmed of our texture is actually now selectable but for us to view the actual results of the trims that we actually are projecting so what you can do is put down a quick material after the grid and now what we can do is just select the exported texture so base color normal roughness and metallic like that so and now in trim textures let's say you want maybe this part in here you see now we are copying them inside here for better visualization what you can do is actually copy this quick material that we have on our object I just created this quickly so you can better I can better show how it's work actually so what you can do is take this quick material that he have piped in our map apps and just duplicate it and put it inside after the trim texture utility you can see now in our preview we can actually see our texture with not only the normal map but also the texture so that's handy so now let's say try to put down some trims on our object what I did is put down normal after the trim so we can we get the hardened edges but for our trims let's like maybe this one let's put it in here and let's take a look at the UV you can see that it basically what it does it basically takes our this is our UV space and we selected top part of the 
tool, so this was selected, and you can see it actually selected our polygon, it fitted the best it could inside our it's our, our UV space where that trim is located. One thing to know that it's will not going to stretch it, it's going to basically put down put down just enough to fit inside. Let's say we have let's select maybe this one and press on this. And if you take a look at our UV space, you can see that our trim was very small, only in here. And you can see it did not stretch out to the maximum of this. It basically tried to fit without any stretching or transforming our polygon place face without any stretching let's try to put inside it so one thing to remember so the trim should be appropriate for our selected polygon and now let's try out something else so maybe this one is short one so let's put on this you see actually what's cool about this that once you put down trim there is actually transforms in here so you can see that you can scale without using the right right mount button so you can scale them you can see in scale so let's say we want this one we completely scale in the details and if you take a look at uv space you can see it basically stretches out all of it so that we would capture one two three four almost basically five times Time the UV space, so basically this UV space is going to be duplicated. Whatever we put in here is basically going to be the zero to one inside this space. It's kind of like the I don't know old school Mario, where you basically come around and you you get in here. So basically in here, basically you're gonna appear in here and basically going to duplicate it. So that's why we actually can do these trims to the infinite amount of time because. It just loops around the same trim. So what I'm going to do is maybe make it a little bigger and then let's just offset it vertically like that. And let's scale in horizontally, not vertically. And let's scale in. Sometimes it doesn't really work once you have put down something so you can always rely on this one though. It's always going to work. So something like this. So for this, let's put on maybe this trim. You can rotate and scale them. So let's move it maybe come around here. So maybe let's make it seven visible. So maybe something like this. Yeah. So that doesn't look too bad. So one thing to note though, what I have noticed. Let's this in here. Translate. Let's take a look at some good position. What I tried to do, which obviously I haven't really trimmed a lot of objects like that, so maybe this is our finished trim. Yes. What's cool about this? You can basically just put down normal, and then you can just export it with these UVs. And let's take a look at our textures inside Substance Painter. In Substance Painter, you can see with these UVs that we just exported, and with the same texture maps that we have here that I put inside here, you see we have our trims. Not all of the UV space is, located, is utilized, but you can see it's the same as a, same look as inside the Houdini. Now let's now I'm going to talk a little bit about the tips that I have noticed when working with this. One thing that can be annoying sometimes is actually when it doesn't actually put down trims when you click on them on object. See right now it's working but sometimes it actually doesn't really work. So but my my tip is just to try to change out the selection mode, primitive points or edge. Try these and then press go back to enter and then press on these. Or sometimes also works when you go inside actual trim texture node network and then just go back. So it might fix the problem. So whenever it's not working, make sure your these are maybe things that might actually solve your problem. So so I think that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found something useful. It's just a start for the trim textures, and hope you see you next time. Take care.